is my hobby. Our story began on a warm summer evening last month. Estelle Wainwright, wife of the young playboy millionaire Tony Wainwright, sat in her room in her palatial Long Island estate, writing a letter. And I, Estelle Wainwright, knowing that death is now certain, and believing that there is no longer any hope, have decided... You! How dare you come into my room? What are you going to do with that gun? No, keep away from me! And I, Estelle Wainwright, knowing that death is now certain and believing that there is no longer any hope, have decided... Well, it sounds like a suicide, all right, Bart. Yes, doesn't it, Inspector? I suppose that's why Tony Wainwright asked us down here. Hmm? What do you mean by that? Yes, doesn't it? You got some doubts about it being suicide? Against such evidence. Why, Inspector... No... Oh, I'll take it. Hello. Yes, Francie, this is Zeke. I see. Thank you very much. Francie says that Mrs. Wainwright's fingerprints were the only ones on the gun. Well, that clinches it. We found the powder marks, Clancy found the fingerprints, and here's a suicide note. Come on, let's go back to the lamplighter's club and finish our game of chess. Just a moment, Inspector. Yeah? What's the matter? What's the name of that young lady who discovered Mrs. Wainwright's body? Jenny Austin. She was asleep in a room down the hall a couple of doors. The shot woke her up. Hmm. Yes, yeah, that, that checks all right. Sure. So, let's be on our way. One moment, Inspector. I, I want to take another look at the corpse. She's over here. What do you want to look at the corpse for? We've already... Here she is, Inspector. Now, please note that Mrs. Wainwright was apparently ready to retire. How do you know that? Well, her hair is done up in, color, in curlers. She's wearing pajamas with cream on her face, no lipstick. I suppose you ought to know about those things. So what? No woman, Inspector, as lovely as Mrs. Wainwright would think of committing suicide in such a condition. Huh? What are you talking about? Women, you may have heard, Inspector, are vain. If Mrs. Wainwright contemplated suicide, she would never do it with her hair in curlers and cream on her face. No, quite the contrary. Well, I'll be... Hey, have you got something there, boy? I'm sure I have, Inspector. This isn't suicide. It's murder. <laughs> Drake, you kill me. Listen, if Stell decided to commit suicide wearing a gunny sack, she'd do it. That gal didn't care a hang for anything or anybody. Including you, I'll bet. Take it easy, copper. Just because you're a gumshoe doesn't give you the right to be insulting. Mr. Wainwright is quite right, Inspector. Even though we suspect murder, we... Murder? Must... Are you kidding, Drake? Hardly. <laughs> Someone murdered your wife, Mr. Wainwright, and was very clever about it. The fact that Mrs. Wainwright's fingerprints were found on the gun proves that. But who the deuce of what a murder, good old Stell? That's what we're here to find out, Sonny. <laughs> That's good. Murder, drama, just like you read about. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? Wait here. Jenny! Yes, Tony? Come here. What is it, Tony? Jake, old man. This is Jenny Austin. Oh, yes, yes. We've uh, already talked to Miss Austin. Watch out for a gag, but This guy's a funny man. Just helping you boys out. Trying to make your sleuthing worthwhile. Jenny and I are getting married tomorrow. But, Tony... Tomorrow? Now, wait a minute. Your wife... Her corpse is hardly uh, cold, eh, Inspector? <laughs> you see what I mean? That makes it look as though Jenny and I were just waiting for Stell to kick off. Provide the motive... Help you chat the law. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, what a story. I can hardly wait to see it in the papers. <laughs> Look, Bart, we've been up all night. And so far, we haven't gotten the first date. That's because the murderer is even more clever than we thought at first, Inspector. Yeah, if there is a murderer. 
This guy Wainwright is making us look like a couple of monkeys. Maybe we better... Fall uh... back on the suicide theory and let it go at that. Well, it certainly looks no, as though... No, Inspector, we'll just have to do our best to act like a couple of monkeys until we can prove ourselves otherwise. Yeah, yeah. What are we going into this room for? We're not going in, Inspector. I just wanted to examine the woodwork of the store. And... Examine the woodwork? What the heck do you want? You know this Long Island home of Wayne Rice is quite famous, Inspector? They say he spent more than a million dollars building it. Well, who cares? Look. I'm sick of playing the part of a monkey. A million dollars is a lot of money to spend on a house, Inspector. Look at the structure of this door. Yeah. I dare say you could withstand a tremendous amount of pressure if anyone were attempting to break in. Now, that certainly is going to be a big help in finding out who murdered Estelle Wainwright. Hmm. You'd be surprised how much it's going to help us. Well, come along, Inspector. Huh? Uh, where are we going now? To examine more doors? Well, we're going to find Mrs. Austin, Jenny Austin's mother. She was the only other person in the house last night beside the servant. Here we are. This door opens onto the veranda. There's uh, someone sitting in the hammock. Oh, well, I think that must be she. Good morning. Are you Mrs. Austin? Yes. Yes, I'm Mrs. Austin. I'm Barton Drake. This is Inspector Noah Denton. Oh, yes, the police. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Pleasant spot you have here. Uh, I'm tired enough to sit a week. I want to thank you for not disturbing me last night. I rather thought you might. The police, I heard... Are and... real tough characters, eh? Well, <laughs> yes. Uh. However, I'm happily disappointed. Oh, we have our moments. Tell me, Mrs. Austin, when did you first hear Mrs. Wainwright's uh, death? Well, this morning. What a terrible thing to have happen. Stella was such a lovely girl. Yes, but uh, tell me, you heard none of the disturbance that went on last night. No, no, I'm a very sound sleeper, and I can't imagine why she should ever think of doing such a thing. You can't? Oh, no, no, I can't. Well, we can. Well, what do you mean? Uh, Mrs. Austin, uh, did you know Mrs. Wainwright well? Well, yes, I did very well. She was a sweet girl, and I was very fond of her. Now, for the first time, I'm really beginning to smell something. I beg your pardon? Uh, Inspector. Mrs. Austin, you are aware that your daughter, Jenny, and Mr. Wainwright are planning to get married soon? Well, of course. Everyone in our crowd knew it. Well, I'll be... That doesn't make sense, Mrs. Austin. Everyone in your crowd knew it, and yet Mr. Wainwright was already married. We've learned that Mrs. Wainwright had refused to give her husband a divorce. You see what we mean, lady? A guy can't be married to two dames at the same time. And if Mrs. Wainwright wouldn't give Mr. Wainwright a divorce, there was only one other way to make things convenient. Well, of all the outlandish... Why don't you see our side of it, Mrs. Austin? A man brings his uh, a fiancé into his own house under the same roof with his wife. He invites his fiancé's mother along as a sort of a chaperone. During the night, the man's wife is murdered. It just doesn't add up. No, it doesn't, does it? Oh, dare you, policeman. <laughs> what do you mean, a policeman? You're so dramatic, you do insist on imagining things. Say, I have it. Have what? A motive for you to work on. Jenny and I are very poor, you know. I've been wanting Jenny to marry the Wainwright millions for years. Why couldn't I be one of your suspects? <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like that monkey again, Bart. <laughs> Haven't you had enough to drink? Take it easy, baby. Little old playboy Tony doesn't like taking orders from his wife. I'm sorry, Tony. Sorry. Yeah. Have a drink yourself. Mm, no, thanks. No. Okay. All the more for little Tony. Good stuff. Free war. Lady? Yes, Tony? Come over here. Yes, Tony. Sit down. Oh, you're on my lap. All right, Tony. Atta girl. You know what? What, Tony? You're a cute looking little number. I'm glad you think so, Tony. I want you to think so. How will I finish off this drink, eh? That's a cute-looking little number. <laughs> the 
on Tony can pick him all right. Every dog got one of his wives and been good looking. Oh, Tony, please don't talk about the others. <laughs> you don't want to hear about it, do you? Mm. A little jealous, maybe? I, I guess I am, Tony. <laughs> That's wonderful. Love me, baby? Yes, Tony. I, I love you, Tony. Say it again. Like you mean it. I love you, Tony. Yeah, I do. Now, kiss me. Oh, not like that. Tony, let's... Come on, come on. Yeah, I do. Maybe you're all right. Tony. Yeah? Well, when are we going to get married? Tomorrow. Did you hear me tell Drake? Yes, but... But what? What? It's rather soon, isn't it? I mean... Oh, so now you're going conventional on me. Oh, it's not that, Tony. Only... You want to wait a decent interval, I no. suppose. Now, listen, sweetheart. Either we get married tomorrow or not at all. All right, Tony. All right. Plenty of James would jump at the chance to marry little old Tony. I got millions. That's why... Oh, Tony, please. Every time Tony Wainwright gets married, something to read about. Tony. Yes, sir. Something to read about. How many wives I've had? One, two... Oh, Tony, it doesn't matter. I'll marry you any time, please. Get out of here. Tony! I don't know if I'll marry you after all. You're after my dough, just like the other. Oh, Tony, please, you're drunk. You don't know what you're saying. I'm not drunk. <laughs> I will be in a minute, though. Jimmy, always after your dough... Well, 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 what do you know? Look who's here. Little old flat foot himself. Come on in, Drake. Come on in. Have a drink. No, thanks, Wainwright. Oh, particular, huh? Very particular. Wainwright, I want to talk to you. So you want to drink with me, huh? Okay. I'm particular, too. I drink by myself. Wainwright, Inspector Denton and I have enough evidence to prove that you were deliberately responsible for your wife's death. Unless you care to answer my Drake, question, you go- I don't like you. Well, I'd be bitterly disappointed if you did. Oh, a smart guy. You've got something over here. I don't like you one bit, Drake. I don't want you around here anymore. Now, get out. Put down that gun, you fool. Get out of here or I'll blow your brakes Put down that gun or I'll... Get out of here. Turn back, Drake. I'm a dangerous man. Keep away from me. Give me that gun, you... Thing you got him before he had a chance to pull the trigger. He did pull the trigger. Huh? He was too drunk to shoot straight, but he... He fucked me with a gun and I went out like a light. Didn't you hear the shot? No. I must have been standing right outside, too. Say, Inspector. Now, look. Hey, Joe. Well, I'm you glad to see you. Hey. I am glad to Who's that? I don't know. Let's find out. I don't care if you are Jenny Austin's mother. Tony Wainwright murdered murdered my sister and that's other nonsense. Your sister wasn't murdered. She committed suicide. Oh, there you are, Mr. Drake. Will you please tell this person... Just she... a minute, Mrs. Austin. Who are you, please? I'm Lenore Bowles, Estelle Wainwright's sister. I want to see Tony. Well, you can't see Tony. He's... he's busy. Mm, you mean, don't you, Mrs. Austin, that you don't want Miss Bowles to see Tony because you intend that nothing shall interfere with your marriage to his daughter? Well, hmm? Mr. Drake, since when did you and your... your flunky decide that you had the right to... Ever right? since you decided to be funny, lady. 
and told us with a merry ha-ha that you'd like to be a sus... Well, I don't know what all this is about. I don't care. I'm going to see Tony. Yes, and... exactly why do you want to see Tony, Miss Bell? Well, I... I want to ask him some questions. What about? Well, that's my business. You believe that Tony's responsible for your sister's death? Is that it, Miss Bell? I know he is. He tortured her and tormented One her. One moment, Miss Bell. How did you know your sister was dead? I... I... There. There, Mr. Drake. That was very clever of you. Now I guess we know what happened to Estelle. Oh, do we, Mrs. Austin? Well, of course we do. This sister of Estelle is practically admitted. I admitted me. nothing. I know that Estelle is dead because she called me last night. And told you that she was dead, I suppose. A likely story. Mr. Drake, I demand that you are... And I demand that you stop talking, Mrs. Austin, and let me handle this. Well, I'll do no such thing if you let this person see Tony while she'll murder him, Inspector, too. Inspector, will you please... Okay, uh... but... <laughs> All right, lady, no. come with you me. Get me, you, you fool. Lock her up in her room, Inspector, and keep her there. Much more to tell you, Mr. Drake. Tony asked Estelle to give him a divorce more than a year ago. She refused, so Tony began flaunting other women in front of her. Mm. He thought that she'd break down and give him the divorce, huh? Yes. Bad as he is, Estelle loved him. She called me last night and said she couldn't stand it any longer. If she didn't give Tony the divorce, she was afraid of what might happen. I see. If you knew that your sister was contemplating suicide last night or believed herself in danger, why didn't you come here at once? Well, I, I came as quickly as I could. My home is in Rayburn. That's a long ways from here. Mm -hmm. Of course, you realize I can check with the telephone company and find out if Estelle did make that call. Of course. Mr. Drake, you think that Your I... knowledge of Estelle's death, Miss Barrows, is based only on supposition resulting from that phone call. However, the proof of your innocence would depend wholly on an experiment I plan to conduct within the next few minutes. Now listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Oh. that Mrs. Austin can't leave the room, Inspector. Not unless she jumps out of the window. And if she does that, she'll break her neck. And that's all right with me. <laughs> it's Wainwright's room, let's go in. Well, well, well. Look who's here. Yes, Wainwright asleep on his bed and Miss Austin applying cold clothes. How dare you come in here? When a guy takes a shot at somebody... Just for practice, we cops will dare anything. Wake him up, Inspector. <laughs> I'll wake him up, all right. Mr. Drake, you should know that Tony wasn't responsible for what he did. Come on, come on. Snap out of it, sleeping beauty. Oh, oh go away, go away. I'll have to ask you to go to your room, Mrs. Austin. Well, come on, come on. Get up. we got some experimenting to do. I'll not go to my room. Tony... We'll take care of Tony. Come along now. Oh, what's he doing to Tony? I'm dumping this pitcher full of water on him, lady. Watch. You got a nerve shoving me around like this. Listen to him, Bart. We got a nerve, he says. After he tried to murder you in cold blood. I was drunk, I tell you. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Why have you got me in my wife's bedroom? It was in here that your wife was murdered. You remember, Wainwright. If you think you can pin this on me, you got another thing coming, Drake. You sound quite sure of yourself, Wainwright. According to your sister-in-law, you killed your wife by remote control, as it were. My sister-in-law? Mm. Hey, what is this? You're right, about a half hour ago, after receiving a telephone call last night from your wife. A telephone call? <laughs> That's a laugh. Listen, Drake, you're getting farther off the beam every minute. Lenore's hated me ever since Estelle and I were married. She's trying to sell me down the river. Perhaps. However, you and I have another angle to settle, Wainwright. What do you mean? I don't like being shot at and hit over the head with a gun. Inspector, lock the door. Lock the... Yeah, sure. Okay, Bob. Now, wait a minute, Drake. 
Take it easy. I'm a sick man. Oh, you're well enough for what I have in mind. <laughs> Inspector, let me borrow your gun. Oh, no. Well, uh, now look. Bud. Your gun, Inspector. Well, okay, bud. Uh, here you are, only... Thank you, Inspector. Drake, what are you going to do? What do you think, Wainwright? No. No, you can't. Not in cold blood. Why can't I, Wainwright? You did. But I was drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. And look, bud, all boy. I'll handle this, Inspector. Don't... Don't, don't drink, don't, I'll do anything, anything at all. It's too late, Wainwright. Don't, please, for the love of heaven, you can't shoot a man in cold blood. Idea. He has shot right into that log in the fireplace. Yes, missed Wainwright by about four feet. Missed him? You weren't even aiming in his direction. <laughs> he thought so. Look at him. He's out like a light. I guess he thinks he was shot. It'll do him good to know how it feels. I still don't get it. You will in a minute. Come on, Inspector. <laughs> I didn't hear any shot. Mr. Drake, you let me out of this room at once. No, I didn't hear any shot, Mr. Drake. Has, has someone else been murdered? Here we are, Inspector. This is it. If this is a game we're playing, I'd like to know the name of it. Well, Mr. Drake? Well, Miss Austin. Is something wrong? No, no, nothing wrong. We're just a bit curious, Miss Austin. Curious? What do you mean? We were wondering why you didn't come running down the hall when you heard the shot. Shot? But I didn't... <gasps> you didn't hear any shot. Is that what you were going to say, Miss Austin? Wait a minute. Look, Bart, if she heard the shot last That's night... That's it, Inspector. Miss Austin heard the shots last night, but not from this room, as she told us. This house is so well constructed that the rooms are practically sound. Well, I'll be... Say, that's the reason I didn't hear the shot when Wainwright fired at you and I was standing up the hall. Exactly. Miss Dawson was the only one who heard that shot last night because she fired it. She entered Estelle's room when Estelle was writing a letter to her sister, probably explaining that the time had at last come when she felt it necessary to go to the police. Now, isn't that right, Miss Dawson? I killed Estelle. Johnny and I had tried to go to him to get him a divorce. We'd even threatened. I, I knew she was going to be. I didn't intend to lose my chance at the Wainwright meeting. It seemed like a fair gamble at the time. Yes, that's the pity of this sort of thing, Miss Austin. Because now even the Wainwright millions can't help you. I'll just move my night over here. Hey, you know what? Chess is a relaxing game, isn't it? Yes, very relaxing, Inspector. Now, let me see. If I move this pawn... Uh, Bart. Hmm? Come on, Inspector. I was wondering why you didn't plant Wainwright in a room like you did the others to see if he could hear the shot. Oh, that. Well, you see, Inspector, Wainwright could have heard the shot. His room was next to a spells with a connecting bath between. I see. And if he did hear the shot, he ignored it. However, I'm sure that if he had anything to do with his wife's death, he would have confessed when he thought I was going to shoot him. Yeah, he was that type, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, Inspector. I'll move my queen there and say checkmate. What? Wait a minute. Well, I'll be... A checkmate it is. Say, I thought your hobby was... It is, Inspector. Mystery is my hobby. 